All right, Matt Moore, Sean Football Insiders. We're here with the legendary Steve Shaughnessy, uh, coached in the Charlotte Metro area for many, many years. Uh, Coach, I just want to thank you for your time today. Thank you um, for having me. And this, this is going to be an awesome thing that we're going to talk about here. Uh, first off, Coach, uh, growing up, you know, obviously you played football. Uh, what position did you play, and um, what really got you into, you know, football as a young man? Well, my older brother played football, and I always loved football, and so I followed in his footsteps. When I was in high school, I was a tight end and a linebacker, and then I uh, went to junior college. I played uh, safety and, out and wide receiver, mm -hmm. and that's what I played when I went to college at Northern Michigan. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go play for a great coach at Northern Michigan. His name was Raleigh Dotch. When he left Northern Michigan, he went to be the offensive line coach with the Green Bay Packers uh, okay. under Dan Devine, and then he was the offensive line coach for the Steelers in the 70s when they won all of those Super Bowls, and then later on he was the uh, head coach of the Birmingham Stallions in the USFL, so he was a great nice. coach. Yeah. And uh, I really, the influence that I had from all of my coaches in high school and, uh, and in college, uh, that's what influenced me to be a coach. And of course, I love football. I played all sports in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I played football, ice hockey in Minnesota, and oh, baseball, uh, and ran track. But, uh, you know, my first love was always football. And uh, so, you know, after I got out of college, that's kind of where I started out and made a career out of it and uh, enjoyed every minute of it. Loved it. Awesome. Awesome. Good stuff, man. So, Coach, what exactly got you into coaching? What was the thing that made you want to be a uh, football coach overall? Uh, well, I would say that, you know, I loved sports. Uh, I was always interested, and in football was my favorite mm -hmm. uh, from a very young age. Back when I was growing up, uh, in 1960 and 61, I was 10 and 11 years old. The University of Minnesota won the Rose Bowl and the national championship oh, at that wow. time. Yeah. And uh, they had the first black quarterback that won a national championship and a guy named Sandy Stevens mm -hmm. uh, who played at the University of Minnesota. And, uh, you know, that, that certainly piqued my interest because everywhere you went uh, on Saturday afternoon, the Gopher football games were on the radio and they had a great team and, mm -hmm. of course, they had Bobby Bell and Carl Eller and just some tremendous players. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, you know, as I went through high school and that kind of thing, then the Vikings came to Minnesota and, uh, you know, I was just always interested in football. And then my high school coaches and even my grade school coach, high school coaches, college coaches, uh, they always took a great interest in me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I respected those guys, and uh, that's kind of what I decided that I wanted to make a career of. All right, Coach. So we just said off camera, 43 years of coaching. Um, 43 years of coaching, 54 years in football, counting playing. Yeah, so kind of just take us through, you know, kind of each of those stops, what made those places special uh, when you were there. Well, my first year uh, out of college, I graduated from Northern Michigan in 1972, mm -hmm. and that season I was the uh, wide receiver coach uh, because, you know, staffs were small, it was Division II, and they usually kept the receiver from the previous year to be the receiver coach. I did that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I went to a small high school right outside of Green Bay, Wisconsin, Pulaski High School. I was the head freshman coach, okay. coached baseball and basketball. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, one of the coaches at Northern Michigan, a fellow named Frank Novak, who coached uh, many years in the NFL, he was uh, an assistant coach at the University of Virginia at the time for Sonny Randall. Mm -hmm. So uh, he had recruited me to Northern Michigan. He called me and asked me to be a graduate assistant. I jumped at the chance. And then the next year, I was the running back coach at the University of Virginia. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we only won one game that year, and our coaching staff got fired. Ugh. Over the summer, I went back to graduate school at Northern Michigan, and the athletic director recommended me to the head coach at Michigan Tech, mm -hmm. uh, a fellow named Jim Cap, And uh, Jim hired me at Michigan Tech as the defensive coordinator at 26 years old. 
and uh, it was an awesome place, awesome opportunity. The first year we were in the top ten in the nation in defense, Division Two, wow. and then but. Michigan Tech is in Houghton, Michigan. It's out in the middle of nowhere. I was a young guy, and it was, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 60 miles to the nearest place where you could meet anybody. <laughs> so uh, I came to Catawba College uh -huh. uh, because Warren Clawitter was the head coach. He had been an assistant at the University of Virginia when I was there. Mm -hmm. And I was a defensive coordinator there for two years, and then Claw went into being a dean of students, and I became the head coach for three years. Nice. After that, I went to Geringer. Uh, had a couple of great teams there. Yeah, uh, I think it was, was it the 84 team? 84 team yeah. was fantastic. Uh, we had a quarterback named Gene Brown mm -hmm. that just got inducted into the Citadel Hall of Fame a year and a half ago. Uh, awesome. He... Uh, Holds a single game rushing record at the Citadel with 286 rushing yards in a game as a quarterback. Wow. Uh, they ran the wishbone. Mm -hmm. And we had Robert Massey, who oh, played yeah. 11 years in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went to Clemson. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I lived in the dorm. I was an assistant line coach with Larry Vander Hayden there. Um, volunteer coach, they called it. And yeah. uh, then I got the opportunity to come back to Charlotte. At Providence Day, okay. And uh, Bill Rogers was a good friend of mine. We came back to Providence Day. I coached there for just a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Coach Reggie Clark there, yep. uh, who was a great player, wound up playing in the NFL for the Steelers, mm -hmm. and uh, played up at North Carolina. And um, from from Providence Day, I went to South Neck, and I was there 11 years as the head coach there. And then uh, in 1999, I left uh, South Mac to go to Butler, and I was there for 14 years. Mm, oh. And uh, then I retired, and then uh, I went over to Shaw Christian for three years. Mm -hmm. I was a running back coach there, and then the last two years I was the offensive line and, and coach and offensive coordinator. Awesome, awesome. Uh, just a, a great history of uh, coaching and being successful at a lot of different places. Uh, South Mech, um, I believe, was the '93 team. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the the special the, the team that had the most success. What do you what do you remember most about that team that really sticks out to you? We just had uh, a great. We didn't have a lot of depth, mm -hmm. but our front line players were fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Colin Harris, who was the most valuable player of the Shrine Bowl uh, that year, his senior year. He was a great quarterback, and uh, at the time he was a leading passer in the history of uh, Mecklenburg County. Now he's still in the top ten, but Colin was a tremendous kid, lived over in Westwood Homes. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, Randolph Slade, we had Derek Falls. Derek Falls was an unbelievable athlete and maybe the best athlete I, I ever coached as far as just oh, wow. pure athletic ability. Uh, he was six four, two ten, and I kid you not, he was one of those guys. He was he was the fastest player I ever coached. So I'm gonna wow. say he was a four three forty. Nobody mm -hmm. believes those times, but I'm telling you that kid was the fastest guy. Yeah, uh, I could point to some things he did on film that were just like unbelievable. Derek Falls, Man. Uh, awesome kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, yeah, that 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 '93 team was great. That was the year that we um, we had the famous, infamous game with West Charlotte oh, at the yeah. stadium. We oh, were driving for the winning touchdown. The game seesawed back and forth. And uh, anyway, uh, we were lining up to kick the winning field goal when the referee blew the whistle and took mm. the time ran out on the clock. Uh, and uh, but it was quite a game against Tommy. All right, Coach, so then you went on to Butler after you left South Mech. What are, what are some teams and players that really stood out, you know, at Butler for you? Well, we, we had a great team uh, the first year I went there in uh, 2000. We had two great players that were great leaders in uh, Prince Parker and uh, Jason Anderson. And, uh, well, we had Donald Mills, who was a great linebacker for us, and uh, – of course, Barry Shuford was our head coach. Mike Hudson oh, yeah. was our defensive coordinator. Uh, oh, we had a great coaching staff, and uh, I think that first year we went uh, 
I believe we wound up 12 and three. We were ahead of Richmond County at halftime in the playoffs, and uh, they came back and beat us in a great game down there at Richmond County. Mm -hmm. So uh, then the tone was pretty much set. I mean, for the next uh, 13 years, I, I believe we averaged 11 wins a year for for the entire time I was there, and uh, might have been 12 wins a year. I don't know. I saw one <laughs> point where. Our total record in 2015 from 2000 was like 200 wins and 50 losses. And wow. So uh, it was a tremendous run with a tremendous group of players. Um, the 2008 team was great. We had, uh, uh, you know, I think our whole secondary got offered by the University of Louisville. We had Spencer wow. Adams that went to Clemson, Eddie Whitley that started up at Virginia Tech, Robert Blanton that went to Notre Dame. Uh, we always we were very fortunate in the years that I was there. We had great quarterbacks in uh, in Jacob Charest who went to Illinois, mm -hmm. uh, Christian Lemay, Riley Ferguson, uh, just a tremendous run of Division One quarterbacks, which doesn't oh, happen yeah. all the time. Uh, some of the great players that we played against, uh, of course, we played against Chris Leak, Hakeem Nix, uh, Muhammad Masakwai. Uh, you know, all that group over at Independence for all of those years that uh, were tremendous and uh, oh, yeah. it was a great rivalry and, and they were awful tough to beat. A couple of years we went 12-2 and two and the only two losses were to Independence. Yeah, Coach, let me ask you about that. Just the coaching battle between you guys and Tommy Knotts and, and his staff. What, what was the dynamic, you know, in that? Well, Tommy's a great coach and uh, my history with him goes way back to uh, – when I was at Carringer and he was at Harding, mm -hmm. and uh, when I was at Carringer, we beat him both years that I was there. The second year, we beat him in overtime. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, when I was at South Mac, he was at West Charlotte. Oh, yeah. We had some great games there. And um, then when he moved over there to Independence, you know, they had Chris Leak, and they just had great teams, and they were really tough to beat because, mm -hmm. for one thing, they were so big in their offensive line that they were tough to stop. Uh, it was tough to stop their running game, even though Tommy is known as a passing coach, but uh, right. they were such a good offensive line, mm -hmm. which Hal Brown coached all of those years. And uh, oh, yeah. it, was, it was just a, tough to stop the run when it got right down to the nitty gritty. And, uh, you know, but eventually we came out, you know, I, th I think we. We beat them the last four times we played and towards the end. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Tommy left and went down to South Carolina. He's had great success there. Uh, but uh, we, we got the better of them there at the end. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Good stuff. And when you got the better of them, did you kind of feel like, you know, you guys at Butler turned the corner uh, to become that dominating team here in Charlotte? Well, yeah, I can tell you definitely. In 1999, the first year I was at uh, Butler, we played Independence, and we beat them, Chris Leak's freshman, we beat them in, in six overtimes mm -hmm. in 99. And yeah. we did not beat them again until 2008. And the thing was, every year, I mean, every practice, everything we did was trying to get good enough to beat Independence. That was our goal because they were the yeah. state champions every year and if you could get by them, you know, you geared all your practices, you weren't practicing, you know, it's sort of like the Ohio State Michigan thing. You oh know? yeah. You're you're pointing towards that game. Did we practice well enough today to beat Independence? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was our mindset. Are we gearing our offense, our defense, our, what we're doing? Is that going to help us beat Independence because they were the cream of the crop and uh, they were the state champions all of those years and so yeah it was uh, and then you know we had some close games with them one year we lost to them in three overtimes and mm -hmm. you know uh, we had some good games with them but uh, there in about 2007 2008 we started getting closer and then got over the hump in 2008 and uh, yeah you know, we knew that if we could beat them, mm -hmm. we could uh, take it all the way. Good deal, good deal. Uh, so we talked about, you know, some of the guys that you had at Butler. Um, talked about that 2008 squad. And then going on, you know, down the line, uh, I was telling you, I was at Myers Park in uh, 2011. We came over there and uh, 
you know, scored on the first play. <laughs> then you guys just kind of took it over. Um, in that era, you, you talked about Peter uh, Kalambayi at linebacker and some of the other guys that were special uh, on that team. Yeah, well, I mean, we had a tremendous run of athletes. Uh, the 2012 team, when I was there, uh, we had, uh, you know, four Division One linebackers in those mm-hmm. last couple of years. I mean, we had Alex Pulaski, he went to Princeton, he was captain of his team at Princeton. Chris Frost went to Auburn, started four years down at Auburn. He was linebacker for us. Peter Columbay went to Stanford, started there for three or four years. Sean Wiggins, who went to Ball State mm-hmm. and uh, made all Mac. Uh, to think about those kids all being on the same team. Then we had Ozzy Sambo. He went to uh, Appalachian State, played yep. up there on some great teams. Uh, we had Leonard Love, uh, safety, who went to Appalachian State and played. Uh, we had Channing Stribling, went to Michigan. Uh, about 2007, we had Jamar Adams, went to Michigan and played. Mm-hmm. Robert Planton went to Notre Dame. Uh, Eddie Whitley went to uh, Virginia Tech, started up there, all-conference player. I mean, the run of athletes was tremendous. I, I remember that last year, I think we had on our defense now, we had three kids that went on to be captains of their college teams. Wow. That were not captains at Butler. Wow. And uh, I'll tell you a funny story. I, I was thinking about it yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. I was at Robert Blanton's wedding, and uh, he had a, a number, you know, Robert played six years in the NFL, played yeah. the Vikings. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had a friend that was on his, a running back from Furman that played with the Vikings. And we were there at the reception after the wedding, and we were talking about football. And Robert told him, yeah, he said, uh, you wouldn't have started if you had been at our high school. <laughs> and, and, uh, the guy was like, what, I played six years in the NFL? And I uh, wouldn't have started on your high school team? And Robert said, no, you wouldn't have started on our high school team. So that was pretty fun. That's awesome, man. That's awesome.